everybody? AxeWizard here. I was a bit blown away by how well my Pathfinder Beginner Box review went. And uh, quite a few people in the comments were excited for my, my offhand comment I made towards the end about how uh, I was going to start a, a goblin campaign with my sons on the weekend. And I just wanted to give you guys an update on how that went, as well as some some ideas on how you can leverage the, the beginner box to do non-beginner box stuff. So, let's take uh, this character I made on Pathbuilder, for example, Brick Slab Jaw. He's a dwarf cleric. He's uh, He's got a battle axe. Uh, I gave him some chain mail and a wooden shield, and he's got some very basic gear. So, I figured it'd be kind of cool... If you go to the details section, you have the ability to add a portrait to him. So I was like, okay, well, I, I'm not a very good artist, but I found that there's a site called Hero Forge, which people usually use to make minis and, and stuff like that. And so when I was making stuff for my goblin campaign, I let my, my sons make their characters on Hero Forge. Now, the goblins in Hero Forge don't look like the goblins from Pathfinder. Um, so I'm not, I mean, you could probably tweak all the uh, settings to really make them, you know, the, the, the really big heads, the really tiny bodies and, you know, the, just the kind of the, the, the squat faces and stuff like that. You could, you could probably tweak the settings, but we didn't get that far. I just let them make what they wanted to, what they were excited to, to play. So uh, why are we doing this though? I'm not going to order a, a mini from this site. Um, but what you can do is you can design your character, screenshot it, and then you can use that as character art on your page. But you can also make your own pawns with it. And I'll show you that after as well. So, let's see. Let's go find dwarf. There's a pretty good start for a dwarf. So, let's. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the face, the hair. I'm not quite sure what hair I want. Oh, yeah. Lady bun. That's cool. That's what we're talking about right there. There you go. That's that's perfect fantasy right there. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want that thick. I mean, we could do... You know, we could do a cool mohawk. That could be cool. Or I, or I, or I could be bald. That could also be really fun. Uh, dwarves usually have, like, super thick hair, though. So I think... I think that's a good hairstyle. So I'm pretty happy with the beard. There's a few other beard styles that we can do. Ooh, I think I might use that one. I like the, the, the big braided mustache. This is also probably a good one. That's very dwarf-like. Um, I'm going to go with this one, though, just because it looks amazing. So I can change the, the body a little bit if I want. I can also change uh, the, like the, the measurements so I can make him you know, a super tall dwarf if I want for some reason. Uh, I don't know where it was. I'm going to put him at four feet. I think that's about where it was. I can make him super skinny. I can make him thick. I can change like his posture so he can be forward or really back. I'll just leave this stuff at the uh, uh, default. So let's jump into the clothing. Um, what might help before we go in the clothing is if you cut down to color, um, there's the body color here, and you can just pick like a rough palette that kind of works for your needs. So, I mean, this is like a perfect textbook dwarf. Um, so this will work for me. Um, and then what you can do is with theme, uh, you can then you can change it to the the colors of your clothes. So I'm just gonna pick a really basic theme right now, and then I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go back to clothing, and we're gonna see. So looking at my character sheet for my gear, um, I've got chainmail and a wooden shield, and I got a battle axe, and I got a backpack on. So I, what I think I might do is. For I, I'm not gonna wear any helmet right now. Um, I could do like something kind of cool, like maybe I can have like a, um, like a, a, a headband or something on. But I like my dwarf the way he is without it, so I'm just gonna not do that. And then since I'm wearing chainmail, I should be able to find something like that. So there's under and over on here. So for uh, for a, a undershirt, um. I want, I think there's like a, a Gam Basin or something like that, that that we can use. Oh, there's so many options on here. Holy cow. I mean, there's a chainmail shirt right there. I'm surprised it's listed as under. So that's cool. So we got that. Let's go to the legs and then let's, uh, I'm just going to pick a really basic pair of, uh, 
uh, like legs here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the over section, and then I'm going to try to find that uh, that uh, over the, the the skirt thing that goes with the uh, chainmail. So let me see if I can find that. There we go. I found it just by the, they included a, a search bar for me. So super nice. So there we go. I got a nice basic chainmail shirt. I like how that looks. So now let's go ahead and let's go back to the chest and go to the over and see if there is anything we want to add over top of our chainmail. So we can add like this uh, chainmail top thing that, that kind of goes with it. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'm I, I think I'm just happy with just the the chain mail like, like we could add all sorts of stuff to this um, To make it really cool, so I'm pretty happy with that Anyway, so let's go to figure out some shoes. So there's lots of different shoes in here uh, Ones I kind of like for fantasy setting like these are a, a good option um, You can also use these ones like these seem pretty cool to me lots of stuff with heels on it <laughs> I mean those look cool, but not really the cleric aesthetic i'm going for like that seems more paladin uh, than cleric especially because i'm not wearing heavy armor i mean those kind of go with it i got a little plate on there but i mean this is just really for flavor i think that looks pretty good for for my cleric so now let's go down to gear and this is where a lot of the the, the fun starts happening so if we go to shields we got a few different type of shields we got like a nice hagar the horrible style shield here <laughs> We got like a splintered broken wooden shield, which I use for like some skeletons and stuff. Um, we also got like a really basic stuff that you can add like designs and stuff onto. I'm looking for a super basic wooden shield. Like this, this would be a tower shield. Like that looks awesome, but I'm not packing that bad boy around. I'd say this is what we're looking for. Just a basic wooden shield, right? Like that looks all right. And then now if we go and we look for, so he has a battle ax. So let's see if we can find uh, something that resembles that. Uh, they got lots of axes here. They got a bearded axe. I think that would look pretty cool. I don't know if that's like visually what a battle axe is in Pathfinder, but it, it's it, it's a one-hander axe. So that looks pretty cool to me. I, I like how that looks. And then, uh, yeah. So there you go. We got like a basic character, right? So now we'll, what we can do is uh, let's go to... I can add something on his side. So we go up here to different sections. I'm gonna go to miscellaneous. Maybe I wanna add like uh, some sort of pouch or something uh, on his right side. Or maybe I could add like a, a water skin or something like that. Or, you know, there's a bunch of different stuff that, that you can add. I kinda like having that. Um, <laughs> you can add like mugs and stuff on there. Uh, what would be dwarfish to have? I think you know what since dwarves have like a a, a, a clan dagger I kind of want to see if I can find like a nice little dagger to add in there uh, We do sheathed There you go. I don't know if that's the style of clan dagger. It's probably like the 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 Scottish uh, Ski and do or however you pronounce it, but I figure something like that could be kind of cool uh, clan dagger done awesome and then let's go ahead and I'm going to add a backpack. So I like this backpack with bedroll because whenever you buy like a uh, adventurer kit and path builder and stuff like that, if you go to your gear, you've got backpack and you got like a bedroll and flint and steel, rope, torch, all this different stuff. Um, let's also find uh, like something that we can do for a religious symbol. That, that could be interesting. That's a good part of the, the cleric. So... I'll probably put that on my left hip. So let's go back to side. And let's just go back to miscellaneous. And let's see what we can find for... <laughs> A piece of wood. <laughs> there you go. I worship the the fish god. <laughs> could I, I could have like just an iron ingot right there. That could be my holy symbol. That seems dwarfish. Uh, we could have like a chakram hoop. That seems pretty big. That's That's massive. I could probably change the size of it. There's a cross. I could use that. That's pretty generic. But, you know, you might want to do something else like uh, a glow stick. <laughs> there you go. We, we could have a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> I, could, I could worship the god of smarts or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would have to put some research into it. I don't even remember what, what, what deity I, I picked. Um, I did not pick a deity. 
So I, I would figure that out. But just for, for funsies, I'm going to pick, like, I don't know, like, a, you know, maybe yeah, it's more paladin type thing. I'll just put, like, a scroll, and that'll be my, my holy symbol, right? So now that you've got your character made, you can go to the pose, and you can play around with some basic poses and see, like, what kind of pose you like. So this is a super basic pose here. Um, you know, you can pick around and mess with poses. And once you find something that you're kind of happy with, um, you can edit it even to to change it up as well. So I think for, like, a cleric, like, that's pretty cool. Ooh, like a Jesus take the wheel kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what's a good thing for my dwarf cleric who's pretty, uh, he's pretty sturdy. He's not very talkative or, like, charismatic. Uh, let's see, I think, honestly, just like the, like, this is a pretty good start. So let's, let's tweak this. So if we go, also for face, right now we're smiling, but my guy's kind of like a, yeah, I can make him snarl. And like the teeth kind of come in i could do that. That, that 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 could be cool i can make them like just like oh uh, i can do both just rage that could be cool i can make him like confused he's like huh? <laughs> i can make him super cocky uh i think i think this is very dwarfish i kind of like this so let's go back and and go back to a, to a different pose so i'm thinking that I'm thinking that this is a this is a, a, a pretty good start. So I kind of like how this looks right here. This gives you a good view. Let's go into advanced and see what we can change. So I think maybe like I want my shoulder to be a little bit more uh, this way and maybe have a little bit more of a bend in it. And then maybe it's like tilted out a little bit more. And then for my elbow, I kind of want this drawn in more. So it's kind of like I, I'm I'm bracing. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe my my shoulder might want to um, might want to come out more, kind of like this. There you go. That looks pretty cool. I like that. And then to like give some like nice definition, uh, I want my my axe to be more visible than than what it is. So I think on my right hand, I might go and just twist it out. A little bit so that way you can clearly see it's an axe and then there you go so you got a basic character so you got a character i also want to uh how do i just rotate everything uh there's got to be a way i think maybe oh right here so i can move him and i want to like rotate him like this way a little bit more so that way i don't have any of the 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 little rune stones on the on the side in the way and I think if we just go back a little bit, I think right here is pretty good. I think like this is a pretty good, I think maybe I might bring my uh, elbow down just a little bit more. There we go. That looks more natural. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So now that we have this, uh, you do, you take a screenshot. You can just hit print screen or you can use snipping tool. Um, I use a program called LightShot that like stores all my screenshots. So for me, I just hit print screen. And then I can take a picture and I can save it. So if you also want to change like the uh, stage and stuff like that, you can add objects on there. You can also change like what texture the, the the base has, so that way it's got like some stuff. You can add stuff on on the base around it. Pretty cool. Um, I love the amount of detail that they can put into these to these uh, figures. Uh, obviously, if I had like a ton of money, I would just be buying a bunch of these for fun. But um, what I don't have a ton of money. I do have the the beginner box that has a bunch of pawns built in um, that help me out. So. How can I leverage that? So once you have your screenshot, there's uh, there's actually a site. Let me pop open a new tab. There's actually a site, uh, pawn.bozark.com. Then, then, now, this is a, a non-HTTPS uh, site, so it's not secure, but it's not you're not transmitting any like data um, as far as like payment information or like personal information. Um, so I feel okay using it. But what it does is it gives you, you can make your own pawns. 
So what it does is it gives you like a page um, of just like, so here are some basic goblins uh, that it comes with. So what you do is you uh, pop open your file explorer and you drag uh, photos that you want to add on there and then it'll print it out. So I did that and then I realized that, oh, uh, I don't have a color printer. I have a very cheap like black and white laser printer. Um, so how do I adapt my already cool art to black and white? Well, there's a few different like programs you can use. The one I always use is called Be Funky. It's, uh, it's pretty much what I do uh, for all my thumbnails and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna open up uh, one of the images. Um, I'm gonna open up my, my dwarf. I just made there we go so i got my dwarf he's looking really cool now uh be funky has a whole artsy section and i've got a, i've got a few fra uh, favorites i like like the the underpainting that can make uh make any photo look like it was painted which is pretty cool but what i'm going to do for my specific black and white i could go with the graphic novel this makes it a lot more subdued and this kind of could work but I felt like it was really taking out a lot of the, the details and I wanted to keep the the details there. So rather than using that one, I went with the crosshatch. And there you go. So this looks all right. Um, obviously it would be better if I could do full color, but I like this, this style and it looks really good when I print it out on my black and white printer. So I just, I'm just gonna go with this. I'm, I'm gonna save it. And I'll just save it as a brick slab jaw. Save. Cool. So now I saved it. So now if I go back to this Pawn Bozark site here, and um, let's go back because a dwarf, I don't know if a dwarf is considered small. They might be. Yeah, they're probably considered small. Let me, let me look it up actually, just to make sure I'm not an idiot. Okay, dwarf. Where does it tell me like what their size classification? Is? Okay, so so dwarves are size medium. So uh, what what I can do is I can go back to this pawn Bozark thing, hit the medium template here, and then I'll just uh, let me pop this open here. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll I'll drag over uh, a few different things. So I got brick slab jaw here. I'll I'll add this bartender I got. I got there a dwarf druid I made and. Uh, I'll do some skeletons and skeleton archer and these peasants. So what I do is I, I select these. I just drag them over and bam, it populates it for you. And then what you do is that when you right click this and you go to print, you want to make sure that you do no margins or else it'll have a little hard time. So once you do that, um, it'll be you'll be able to just uh, print them out and you just cut them out and guess what? They go right over top of the pawns that come in the the beginner box. So you can make your whole, uh, you, you can make whatever characters you want and you know, you don't have to do the extra step of making it black and white if you have a, a color printer. Um, I mean, you could even probably, you know, put them on a, a thumb drive or something like that and then go take them to a place that uh, prints for you if you want to do full color. Um, that's probably cheaper than, than getting an entire printer. But, you know, you have options for that. So this, this, is, this is working for me. I'm excited with this method. So I sit here and I brainstorm characters and I kind of play around with Hero Forge just to get them how, how I like them. And then I, I uh, screenshot it convert it to black and white and then i uh, slap them on these sheets and print them out and there you go i've got i've got tons of pawns there you go so just to just to show you what i'm talking about here you can see i've got like this uh, basic pawn platform i got like a few rat pawns and like a kobold pawn and i'm just simply cutting them out and then just putting it over top of it and then now you have your own pawns which is super handy and you can uh place them on your your grid or, or whatever it is you're using and uh yeah so this is how i'm running my games right now with my kids on the weekends uh so far the goblin campaign is going fantastic like we've had technically two sessions now i i say session but they're really they, they really only last about like an hour or two um you know before somebody has to go to the bathroom or they just want to go play a different game or something like that but you know they're they're having a blast so far as goblins They've already burned a farmhouse. Um, 
<laughs> they tried to mug some farmers or whatever, and then they actually robbed the whole farmhouse. Uh, took a bunch of useless junk. Uh, I think one of them was like shredding all the uh, clothes and then like dumping acid on them because, because <laughs> why not? And uh, yeah, so they're they're on the run from their goblin chief, the, who for some reason was started attacking them and sending minions after them. They uh, had a fun battle on a water crossing to where uh, they they came up to this water crossing and I, I painted the picture like they, they did perception checks to see like if there's a way to cross. There's a one spot that's got like two stones where you can you know, make like either an athletics or an acrobatics check to cross. And <laughs> once they got to the other side, uh, some of the goblins from their old band was chasing them and tracking them. <laughs> And so, as soon as they spotted him, my oldest is playing Nogs, this uh, barbarian goblin. He starts splashing water on the stones to make it slippery. I was like, oh, that's actually a smart idea. So, when one of the goblins tried to come over, uh, he failed his check and slipped and got carried down the river. <laughs> And he kept failing his reflex saves or whatever to like try and grab onto something. And he just kept going down the river. <laughs> Oh my god, the kids loved it. It was fantastic. So, and they they really loved the uh, the fact that they can make their own characters and that they can uh, you know play with their pawns. And I just have this little mat that I bought off of Amazon. Uh, let me pull it up here. So this is what I'm using here. I got it off of Amazon for like I think it was it was 30 bucks honestly it's a bit overkill because i'm only using literally half of one of these because it's so big and it takes up my entire dining room table so but it comes with these uh these dry erase markers and it comes with these clips that you can slide on to flatten out the map because you roll it up and it's all rolled up so if you just put the the flattening clips if you just put half of them on there it works perfectly for my table so I think I paid a bit much for this. I could have gotten something else, but I mean, this is working fantastic. But really, you can find any, I mean, you could even go to like a, a dollar store and just get one of those white pieces of like uh, uh, marker board, poster board. And you can even just measure out a grid if you want with like permanent marker. And then you can just use dry erase to do your stuff if you wanted to. I want something uh, a little nicer and this has been working great. So that's what I've been doing. So it's been, it's been working out fantastic. And uh, yeah, l let me show you guys my, my characters uh, uh, or the, the characters that my, my son's made. So I'll show you guys the, the non black and white images. So this is uh, Gobby the Goblin. This is what my youngest made. <laughs> He's a goblin alchemist. Uh, for some reason, he made him like really buff, even though he has a strength uh, modifier of plus one. So that was pretty fun. But Gobby is... Uh, absolutely having a blast he's uh he's the guy who's shredding all the clothes and burning houses down he's definitely living up his goblin life and then my oldest made nogs the barbarian <laughs> yeah again these don't look like pathfinder goblins but uh yeah he's uh he's having fun he's i love uh I love what they're doing with these characters. And then and then I, I wasn't sure what, what they were going to make. So I also made a character to play along with them, even though I'm also GMing. And w when we play, I just more take a back seat and just try to help them. So I made a druid called Scriggles Wildfang. And, uh, you know, he's got like his backpack. He's got a pouch full of stuff. He's got like some basic like leather scale armor or something like that. He's got a spear. Now, I know druids can't use metal, so I tried to make this look like it was a shiny rock. It didn't really come out right, but, you know, I, I, I'm pretty happy with it. So this is my druid, and I, I kind of helped them out. So <sighs> the ending of today's session was uh, absolutely crazy. They got directed to uh, this sort of tavern that doesn't discriminate against goblins, and... Uh, while they were there, they met a, a goblin named Verk, who was actually used to be part of their tribe, but he, he split a few days before the chief started uh, attacking them or whatever. So they had a conversation with Verk, and Verk is like, look, uh, since you're here, I got a job for you. Come meet me outside <laughs> after dark if you want more details. So it turns out the job is to 
like uh, cause a distraction so Verk can rob this inn that they were currently staying at. And because uh, I guess there's some hidden uh, treasure vault underneath that, from what Verk says. So the boys rent a room. And then their idea of a distraction is that they have Scriggles wild morph into a rat. And then Nogs, the, the really big, beefy barbarian, um, starts screaming bloody murder, like, oh, help, help, to cause a big enough distraction to get the innkeeper and his bouncer to come upstairs. And uh, they were also smart enough to, like, lock the door. So well, the innkeeper's, like, pounding on the door, and then, like, the, the orc bouncer, like, just comes and puts his axe through it and busts in. And then they find Nogs the Barbarian on top of a table, like, help! And then they find Gobby, like, underneath the bed in the fetal position, going, get away! And then there's me as a rat, just, like, chittering around the room. And they managed to keep up the, the deception for about three rounds. <laughs> And then all hell broke loose. So the the orc uh, eventually was about to to get me. So uh, they caused a distraction. I took advantage of that to like bite the the orc, and uh, and then I just kept I, I I I scurried up the innkeeper's pant leg and like got underneath his apron. So then there was this hilarious thing where like Nogs is trying to punch me through the apron, but he's actually punching the innkeeper in the nuts. <laughs> and my youngest thought that was hilarious. He was just bawling his eyes out, just laughing because it was just it was ridiculous. Anyway, uh, tragically, uh, the innkeeper of the orc died, <laughs> and. Uh, we left the session where they're going to meet with Verk to see what's going on because he's currently trying to pick the lock to the, the trap door behind the counter. And now Nogs has the keys he looted off the innkeeper. So I'm thinking what's probably going to happen is the Nogs or uh, Verk is probably going to try to like betray them or whatever because I'm making this stuff up on the fly. I didn't really put much thought into this I because it was meant to be just like a little one-off thing and until I, I read the uh, Guns and Gears book to figure out how to play the inventor and the, the gunslinger, which was their first choice of characters. And so I'm just kind of making this up off the cuff, just like, you know, pre uh, presenting them with obstacles and seeing how they, they navigate to it and uh, just making stuff up on the fly as they ask for stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited to see what happens. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I got to do some research on what's going to be down in that vault. Holy cow. I better get on that. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that the next weekend, I'm, I, I'm willing to bet that this is going to end with... Uh, the boys having some fat loot, and I think this inn's going to be in flames. <laughs> I think they're going to burn it down, too. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Sorry for rambling so long. I've just been having a blast with this. I hope some of this was helpful. Um, there's other programs out there that you can use. Like, you don't have to use Hero Forge. Um, there's other stuff out there that you could probably do. I mean, you could even probably like try to AI generate art or something like that if you wanted to, but I like the fact this gives you customization and it's just, it seems really pretty easy and intuitive for me to pick it up and to make whatever character you want. So uh, let me know what you guys do. Uh, I'm really curious to, to see everyone's uh, tips and tricks because I've been, uh, I've been watching like tabletop gaming for like years. Like I absolutely love Critical Role. I mean, that's probably the the, the cliche generic one to watch, but I I love it. And uh, it kind of got me into tabletop gaming. And I, I bought the D and D five E books a while ago, and I I tried to get in uh, a few sessions. And just scheduling conflict is always the 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 big bad evil guy. So. <laughs> It never really worked out, and uh, I tried to do some online stuff, and then, uh, well, I don't, I don't like playing with strangers really, so that was that was a bit uh, anxiety inducing, and it didn't really go well. So now that I'm able to do Pathfinder at home with the boys, uh, thankfully due to the the Pathfinder beginner box because it opened the door, and now they're they're starting to really flow with the uh, system, so. They're starting to get really smart when they play. So 
I'm kind of uh, like like my my oldest splashing water on the stones to make it have a higher DC for when the uh, goblin tries to cross the river was fantastic and I loved it and you know my my youngest uh, when they got to that first little farmhouse it it was locked he's like I want to take one of my acid flasks and try to melt the uh, or try to like dissolve the uh, lock I'm like okay uh make a spell attack i guess <laughs> so so it's been a really fun journey and uh, i'm i'm loving it uh let me know your tips and tricks and uh, i hope you found this helpful thank you so much for watching i appreciate it